Hello everybody, so today we're looking at um, materials, often known as um, states of matter. And what I've done is I've divided it up into um, five sections. Okay, the first one being discussing what matter actually is. The second one being the types of matter, there's three of them, and their properties. Third one then, how they are represented in a diagram. So how do we visualize them? Um, fourth being the changes of state and that type that brings in um, the conservation of mass then. So look, we'll get started straight off there. Um, okay, so starting off, the atom, matter. So I have a definition down that you just need to know off by heart. There should be no excuse for not knowing this one. Okay, matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Okay, and all matter is made up of these things called atoms. Now, I speak in a bit of detail on what an atom actually is uh, in the chapter on the atom atomic structure. Um, but just to give you the gist of it now, atoms are simply um, particles that make up everything. So imagine you have a giant piece of Lego, okay, and there's thousands of pieces in it, okay. Well, an individual piece would be considered to be an atom, or also known as a particle, okay. Um, and all of these particles make up matter. And matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Everything, for the most part, um, occupies space and has mass. It has to have both of them. If you look at anything from, um, from your pencils to your laptops to um, your drink of water in front of you, okay, um, all of those things contain mass, have mass, and occupy space. Okay, so that's just a definition um, that you have to turn off. Really, it's one of the key definitions in chemistry. Now, that brings us into the three types and their properties. And you can see I have the names written down already. You should have a general idea of them, anyhow. Solids, liquids, and gases. There are more than three types um, of um, states of matter, but for your junior cert, junior cycle, and also for your leaving certificate, okay, you only need to know the three types, um, and that's it. Okay, so we'll ignore the rest of them um, to avoid any confusion. Now, you do need to know um, their properties, and each of them have a particular property associated with them. Okay, so solids have a definite shape. So we can write that down. Liquids, no definite shape. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I had 200 mils of water, or any sort of liquid, it could be milk, or it could be vinegar, or whatever, okay? And I poured, we'll say, that 200 mils of um, milk into a cup, okay? The liquid would take on the shape of the cup. If I then poured the same um, liquid there into um, a bowl, well then the liquid would take on the shape of the bowl. And then likewise, if I changed it, and I put it into a bottle, or a different container, or whatever, okay? it will take on the um, shape of um, the container. So liquids have no definite shape. Now, gases are a little bit trickier, um, only because they're um, more difficult to visualize. Like we can see solids and we can see liquids, we can't see gases. So this is just something that we have to appreciate that is there, like we know there is gases because well, we're exhaling oxygen and we're, uh, sorry, we're inhaling oxygen and we're exhaling carbon dioxide. If you just breathe on your hand, you could feel something warm, okay, and you could feel something coming up against it, okay. Um, so gases, is for the most part, you just have to learn it off and they have no definite shape. So similar to that of, um, of liquids, they take on the shape of the container. No definite shape. Okay. Now, if we think about liquids, next, um, and if we're looking at any sort of liquid, well, they flow, don't they? All liquids, they flow. And so do gases. We just don't see it at all. They also flow. And do solids flow? If we think about it, if you had... Um, uh, a lunchbox there or whatever, does that flow? It doesn't, okay? So it does not flow. Okay, um, next, what else could we, um, can we do? Okay, so let's talk about volume. So gases have no definite volume.
Now, volume is measured in centimetres cubed or mils, or sometimes litres, but in the lab, we usually measure it in centimetres cubed or mils. And just a reminder, one centimetres cubed is the exact same thing as saying one mil. So they're identical to one another. Okay, so just as, um, to point that out to you. Okay, so gases have no definite volume. Okay, uh, and what, what we mean by that then is they can be compressed. And I will explain that in more detail in the next section. They can be compressed. Okay, so let's go back up to the solids and um, gas or liquids and talk, talk about their volume. Well, solids have a definite volume. Okay, um, that's just something you learn often. No matter what container you put a solid in, because it doesn't move, because it has a definite shape, okay, um, it will def therefore have a definite volume. Now we must ask ourselves, do liquids have a definite volume? They actually do. And we, we can think about that now um, logically. Let's just say we are dealing with our cup of milk again. And I pour 200 mils of that cup of milk into a bottle. And then I move the, um, the liquid, the milk, from the bottle into a bowl. Well, we're still keeping the same amount each time, okay, if you pour it out correctly. Okay, so therefore the volume is not changing. The shape is changing for sure, okay, but the volume, the amount, if you put two, um, the same um, um, milk into the cup or the bowl or the bottle, okay, they have the same amounts. Okay, the same volume. So we call that a definite volume. So we have our three types and we have their properties. And you need to know some similarities and some differences. So we can see solids and liquids, they both have a definite volume, but gases do not. Likewise, you can see liquids and gases, they have no definite shape and they can flow. Both of them have no definite shape and they can flow. And obviously solids do not. Okay, so you do need to know some differences. Okay. Let's talk about the properties in a little bit more detail in terms of the diagrams. So this is how they are represented in a diagram. Now, this is actually a junior search question there not so long ago. You're given um, three containers here, A to C, okay? And you must identify them as either being a solid, liquid, or gas. Okay, now, how do I go about this? Well, the easiest one I find is look for the gas, and the gases are usually the easiest. Gases, their particles, their atoms, will be spread out throughout the entire container, and there will be large spaces or gaps between each particle. So we can see here, B and C, the particles are near the bottom, whereas A, they're spread out. And then the second thing I told you to look out for is if there are spaces in between. Now, these spaces are just empty space. There's nothing there. Okay, so there's actually space that's in between all the atoms there. So therefore, A, A is our gas. And remember how I was saying early on that they could be compressed. Well, the reason gases can be compressed is because they have these all these spaces in between. So what happens there is if we push the particles um, on top of one another, we're getting rid of the... Um, the space in between the particles. So we're decreasing the volume and getting rid of all the space between the particles. So that's why they can be compressed. Solids and liquids, which has to be one of these two here, there's no spaces between the particles, not really. There's a tiny space, but nothing, um, nothing major. Okay, next, we have our gas, liquid or solid, and that could be B or C. Well, go to the very first thing that we said about the definite shape. Solids have a definite shape, which between B and C look like it has a rigid structure. Well, that would be C. Okay, I know it's not taking up the entire container, but we can see C here is like um, a cube of sugar or something on, something on those lines. It's got straight lines going up here. Okay, so C is our solid. And therefore, A, oh, sorry, B is our liquid. Now, um, what's I to say about that? B, you can see it here, the particles look like they're um, rolling on top of one another. I know it's obviously, it's a picture, we can't um, see a moving image, but they are static. Um, but they, that's what they're trying to represent, that the atoms are flowing 
over one another. Over one another. Now, just um, a quick thing before I move on to another picture is for B there. When I was correcting that year, I couldn't help but notice that loads of students wrote down gas, water, solid, and they got B wrong. Then you're asked for the state of matter. Water is an example of a liquid. It is not the only liquid. Oils, milk, alcohols. There's tons of different um, liquids out there. Even the um, acetone is what you use to remove. Um, uh, acetone is what you use to remove your nail varnish rem remover. Okay. So loads of different liquids. Now this one came up last year, and it looks slightly different uh, because it's in color, and you're given more options. But the format of the question is the exact same. Okay. You're given diagrams from A to E, and you're asked to state whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas. Well, go to the most obvious again for the gases. All the gases have their particles spread out throughout their entire container and their spaces, large spaces, between the particles. And straight away, if we're looking at that, we can see B and E are spread out through the entire container and that there's large spaces between each of the uh, particles. So um, B is a gas, and E is a gas. Okay, now let's continue on. Um, a solids have a rigid structure. Okay, that means there could be no spaces in between them, or tiny, absolutely minuscule spaces between them. And we already can see that D is a solid. And if we look at A, it's identical, except for the colors. Okay, besides the colors, these two are identical. Okay, ignore the colours for now. They actually, like, the, the, the colours are essentially, for this part over here, are distractor. Okay, it means they actually play no um, part in terms of figuring out if it's a solid, liquid, or gas. Okay, so you could be colour blind and you'd be able to solve this, um, no problem still. So A is a solid. And finally, C. Now, C is a bit harder to determine. First of all, we have to ask, is it a gas? Yes, there is spaces in between the particles, but the second part of it being a gas is that it fills up its entire container. And we can see here for C, it's not really doing that. Okay, so I wouldn't actually class this as a gas. And then if I was thinking, is it a solid? Well, in this case here, the, there is too big of spaces between them. So I wouldn't class this as a solid either. So our only other option is a liquid. And that's it. Uh, it's important not to overthink these. Now, bear in mind that in the previous one, you're only dealing with single um, atoms. In this one over here, we're dealing with multiple types of atoms. Okay. Now, that comes up in a different chapter. There should actually be a section over here on elements, compounds, and mixtures, which is the other chapter I was just saying. Okay. Um, and we're going to ignore that section for now. And we will do it um, when I do the, um, the video for elements, compounds, and mixtures. Um, so we can, we're going to ignore that part for now. Okay, change of state. Now, all, these, all of these um, states of matter can change, okay? And to do so, we need a heat change, um, some, form of, some form of temperature change. So you're either increasing the temperature or you're decreasing the temperature. So let's have a look. Um, if we went from a solid to a liquid, Okay, how do I do so? Well, I often think of my solids as ice. The best way to, um, for me for this um, is just to visualize ice. And if I want to convert it um, into a liquid, I have to increase the temperature. Okay, so take it out of the freezer or something, okay, to room temperature. And when something goes from ice to the water, uh, it's melting. That's what's happening to the ice cubes, they're melting. So that's the process, melting. It doesn't have to just be ice, however. That's just an example that I use. Or say for argument's sake, we wanted to go from the liquid to a solid. What happens there? Well, in that case there, all we have to do to convert it is to freeze it. So freezing is taking place there. Um, let's just do a different one um, for practice. And uh, let's just say a liquid to a gas. So you're boiling a liquid at, at home. Um, yeah, you're boiling liquid at home, and we know that we're cooking potatoes or whatever, boiling potatoes, 
and we know that um, as you do so uh, it's changing from a liquid to a gas so what process is that called it's called evaporation evaporation so it's going from a liquid to a gas but is it possible to go the other way around well it is all of these can be changed from one another quite easily again you just need to either increase the temperature or decrease the temperature so Going from a liquid to a gas, where obviously if we're boiling something, we're increasing the temperature. That's fairly obvious. But if we're going from a gas to a liquid, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to freeze um, or cool the temperature. Now, imagine it's a cold day and you breathe onto um, a car window or something, something on those lines. And you will notice these tiny, thing, tiny water droplets forming. That's because you exhale two things. Carbon dioxide and water. Water vapour. And what's happening there is the water vapour is condensing into a liquid. So we call that process condensation. So we have our evaporation, increasing temperature, and condensation, decreasing the temperature. You don't need to worry about solids and gases. Finally, conservation of mass. Now, this is really important, okay? And the conservation of mass states that matter cannot be created nor destroyed, but can be converted from one state to another. When we talk about state, we mean states of matter, meaning solids, liquids, or gases, as we just explained up above there. And we can do so by changing the temperature. So this is important. So if I go back over here, and let's just say for argument's sake, we have our solid there. And actually, no, I'll do it down over here. So we're going from a solid to liquid. Okay, we're going to melt some ice, okay, and I'm just going to use ice as my example. Ice, and when we melt ice, it goes into water. So, say for argument's sake, if I do so, um, if I melt, we'll say, two grams of ice, well then, we will be left with two grams of water. Okay, so what's, what I was trying to say there is the conservation of mass that's occurring here. We're changing the state by changing the temperature. It's a physical change. Okay, um, but the mass is remaining the same, even though the properties might be different. Okay, the mass remains the same because matter cannot be created nor destroyed, but can be converted from one state to another. So that's really, really important. And that goes for all of them. Okay, whether it's solids, liquids, or liquids, the gases, or vice versa. Okay, the, um, the, the mass does not change. And all of these, when we're changing them um, over here, all of these are known as physical changes. For your chemistry later on, you will have to know the difference between a physical change and a chemical change. A physical change is where you're going from a solid to a liquid to a gas or vice versa or something along the lines. Okay everybody, look, I hope that helped. Um, we went through quite a few um, different topics there. Um, this is an important chapter because it's the start of chemistry and if you can get a good handle on the first two or three chapters in chemistry, you'll be doing quite well. Okay everybody, best of luck with your studies.